I had uh, come across Mad Magazine, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and I was taking a look at it, and I was reading through some of the old issues, and uh, it has gone unbelievably far left wing. And then I uh, I went on vacation, I kind of forgot about it, um, and then I, I got the notification from uh, EVS's stream tonight that uh, I guess they're going out of business. Um, I actually thought they had... I thought they went out of business earlier, and then they re-released, but I guess they've been releasing special editions. Anyway, so they took a turn for the hard... They've always been left of center, because, you know, most creative people are left of center. But uh, in 2015, people got Trump derangement syndrome, uh, and Mad Magazine got a terminal case of it. So I I clipped this, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. It's just one example. There are you can you can find the, the magazine, and there are tons of examples of Mad Magazine being very 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 far left. And the thing is, okay, right off the bat, you're you're telling people, you're telling you're telling people your audience. Um, I'm not. You're saying I'm not interested in people who are either conservatives or either moderates, right of center. You're saying all those people I'm not interested in. And even, you know, for a lot, most most people are moderates, slightly moderate right or slightly moderate left. But the thing is, even if you're, if you're somewhere in that middle ground, this just nonstop Trump stuff gets old really quickly. Even um, if I was on the far left, it would be getting old. I mean, there's there's other people in poly. If you want to make, you want to touch on politics, um, AOC is ripe for parody. Um, Nancy Pelosi is ripe for parody. Maxine Waters. There's a lot of people in politics you can make fun of. It doesn't. I would say in, with Mad Magazine, ninety percent of the time it's they're they're punching right, and they're very they're punching much much harder right than they are. Um, punching left uh and it's like even if they were they did want to go after the right exclusively you can't make it every magazine if you look through the past um three years of mad magazines literally i think in every magazine you're going to find examples of them going after trump and going after people on the right um let's take a look at some of this Oh, the thing is, a lot of times to go after people on the right or go after conservatives or even people who are just slightly right of center, they have to twist themselves and twist logic to do it. And it becomes kind of awkward because you, you're looking at it because you're thinking, first of all, all politicians are, are not good people. And I, I'm not, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's Trump, Obama, Bush, Clinton, or Hillary, or uh, Sanders. Politicians are scummy people, all of them. There's a lot to make fun of. And to ignore the corrosion and rot on the left to make fun of the corrosion and rot on the right. And there's definitely a lot on both sides. It's just kind of weird. It's it's just, you're being disingenuous and, and it's just, it's boring. When, when I know the outcome of a story or a punchline, and the punchline every time is orange man bad... It gets old. I mean, we don't. We have IQs over a hundred. You know, it's not. You gotta surprise us a little bit. Ice trap. It's fun to build this terrible wonder, but woe to the kids who get caught under. Clever. Okay, DACA. Why don't you look up what DACA stands for? Ice and the. Um, they're talking about the cages on the border. F- you want to look up <laughs> the photographs of kids in cages on the border? Those were taken from Obama's Obama's eight years. He was um, Obama. I think actually up until this point has uh, deported more uh, Mexicans and Guatemalans than Trump has. And um, those photos of kids in cages are from Obama, not Trump. They're from Obama and the hypocrisy of these people on the left. My God, the the just insane hypocrisy of the media. It's just. I mean, any anyone with an IQ over sixty five is looking at these 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 media pundits and saying, "How do you how do you live with yourself?" I mean, we're not all idiots. I mean, we're not all raising a fuss, but just because we're not raising a fuss doesn't mean we're not taking it all in and we're not noticing who is putting forward these bizarre uh, propaganda. It's literally fake news. 
Um, liberal tears. Try to get your DACA application in. There were other, some DACA kids who have been here for years and years and years. Now they're adults. And uh, people are saying, well, you know, if you send them back to Guatemala or Honduras or whatever, they don't even, you know, they don't even know the culture. They don't speak the language. They, all this and that. And then they interviewed some of the DACA kids who are now adults, and they didn't speak a word of English. They needed translators to translate from Spanish because they, while they have been here for several years, they didn't learn enough English to even have an interview. Anyway, um, I believe the D in DACA stands for deferred. So maybe you want to talk to uh, Obama about that. Um, President Trump's zero tolerance immigration policy promised to persecute, prosecute all who illegally entered the United States, just like Obama did, uh, including asylum seekers. Okay, here's the thing with the asylum is um, you're coming from uh, Guatemala. Uh, you have to seek asylum. You have to enter your petition for asylum in the first uh, country that has been designated by the United Nations as a, a, a safe country. That's Mexico. Mexico is not some third world hellhole. It's a second world. It's a mixed first, second, and third world nation. But it's not, it's not the hellhole that these um, lily white liberals in America seem to say it is. It's been designated by the United Nations as a safe nation for which uh, Guatemalans may seek asylum. They passed through 2,000 miles of Mexico <laughs> to go to Texas and California. That's not... Even the United Nations says the asylum seekers must seek asylum in Mexico, not in the United States. Mexico is not a hellhole. <laughs> um, guilty of being black. Closed world gameplay. Back in April, police in Philadelphia called because two black men were sitting in a Starbucks. Uh, yada, yada. Um, yeah, two black guys were sitting in a Starbucks, and they refused to leave when they were asked to buy something. Being asked to buy something. And that was the, um, I noticed the blonde-haired girl. I don't, I'm sure it wasn't even a blonde girl who kicked her out. Kicked her out. I think it was a Mexican girl. Um if you're in a Starbucks or if you're in any place of business, yes, you might be asked to purchase something. That's perfectly reasonable. To sit in a Starbucks, asked to use the bathroom. To, Starbucks is a business. They're a publicly traded company. They're trying to make money. Uh, and there was something shady about that. Um, I won't go into it. I'll just say there's something shady about it. There's a lot of stuff you can't say on YouTube. So, um, Okay, so you found you found a dozen people who are dicks maybe you found uh, you found a dozen people who are jerks yes there are jerks in this world jerks come in all colors um there are plenty of african-american jerks and there are plenty of african-american criminals as well as european uh, american criminals there are jerks in every every nation on earth has its jerks so yes you found some jerks my point is it's there's there are two interpretations for these um you know the concept of see something say something um, but yes, there are, of course, there are jerks. Uh, Michelle Wolf hosts Correspondence Dinner. Uh, you can look that up on YouTube. I believe it's on there. Uh, it wasn't funny. It was just Orange Man bad for, I don't know, a half hour or something. I don't know. What, what is their, what is their take here? You smell burning. It's because comedian, uh, Wolf roasted the GOP at this year's White House Correspondents' Dinner. You would think the party elephant mascot would have thicker skin to get red in the face. Not really. It just wasn't funny. Oh, uh, she, I think she attacked, um, Sanders, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh, perfected bold lip. Saturday Night, Night Live. Okay. Saturday Night Live has not been funny. People always talk about, they always say Saturday Night Live was funny when I was a kid and, I, maybe she went back to the '80s with the Belushi and Belushi and uh, Gilda Radner, and um, maybe uh, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. Though that crew of uh, comedians, yeah, they went on to have incredibly successful careers because they are legitimately funny. But if you look at Saturday Night Live in the past 25 years, kind of hit or miss. Um, more missing. I mean, you'd have to take a look at the people who were on it. The The funniest guy on Saturday Night Live in the past 25 years has probably been Will Ferrell. And I, I based that on him having an incredibly successful career. 
Um, no, she's not funny. She's just orange man bad. How many times can you... That's the most flattering photograph or drawing you could uh, post on her. That's uh, She has a, a little video where she's singing the praises of abortion. It is so ghoulish and creepy. Okay. Dear far, far left people... Uh, I know you're not watching this or listening to this, but you have left so many of us who were on the left behind. Many people believe in keeping abortion legal, at least up to, I don't know, the first trimester or, or, you know, reasonable limitations on abortion. But your macabre take on killing babies, um, the people on the right, I always thought these right-wing religious a-holes we're talking about slippery slopes and killing babies. And I realized, no, the right-wing religious a-holes of the 80s were right. There are politicians, I think, in New York who were talking about giving birth to the baby, keeping the baby comfortable, and then making the decision with the doctor and the mother as to whether or not they should kill the baby. That's insane. You've lost your fucking mind. You're talking about talking about killing babies. Uh, you're going to lose in 2020 and you're going to lose in 2024 too. Um, Marco Rubio debates Parkland students. Shots fired after shots fired. Uh, Marco uh, Robot Rubio. Yeah, he was a kind of a dull candidate. Um, But this is kind of not exactly deep inside baseball, but um, most people in America are very pro Second Amendment. We're pro First Amendment. We're pro Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Six, and um, uh, I don't know. The Eighth is cruel and unusual punishment, I think, and the Tenth Amendment, police powers. Um, uh, so you're you're tr- you're kind of alienating the majority of America by coming out against the Second Amendment. It's a bizarre take. I mean, you can. If you want to talk about Marco Rubio being a robot, that's fine. Go for it. But to to laugh about the Second Amendment is bizarre. If those teachers were armed, they probably would have saved lives. Anyway, uh, Scooby-Doo. Um, of course, they <laughs> race swapped them uh, with an Asian kid and an African-American breastless transsexual lesbian. Let's see. Writer Matt Cohen, artist uh, Brazula. And um, what's the punchline? Is it Orange Man bad? Not exactly. It's the National Rifle Association. Wah, wah. <laughs> because the Second Amendment is so bad. Um, no, the Second Amendment is awesome. It's t- the Second Amendment is to protect us from the tyranny of an oppressive government. If the government ever get so oppressive, we need to water the tree of liberty with their blood. I know how creepy that sounds. I know if a three-letter agency was hearing it, they would probably be knocking on the door, but that's the point of America. If you read not only, not the Constitution, the, the documents that came before the Constitution, the writings of the founding fathers, the tree of liberty must be re- replenished with fresh blood. Ah. Uh, these people are, they want to create a country that isn't this country. I say to them, why don't you make, if you, if you want to turn a country around, why don't you make Mexico great again? Make Guatemala great. All these countries have natural resources. You can make any of them great. If you really believe socialism and communism is so awesome, take one of the countries, make it awesome. Make it into the communist u- utopia. Make it into the workers' paradise like you did Russia. Oh, wait, Russia wasn't a workers paradise it actually sucked pretty bad it um lasted from i don't know when the 1914 was at the bolshevik revolution and to the late 80s it kind of collapsed um it has a a long long track record of not working melania and the amazing tone deaf green coat go after the president's wife who has nothing to do with anything She's just a model, for God's sakes. She's just the president's wife. She hasn't done anything to deserve um, this just disgusting, disgusting levels of hatred from 
these nut jobs. A dispassionate faux pas. Melania Trump has done her share of dumb things this year, from launching her Be Best campaign with information and graphics plagiarized uh, from an Obama era pamphlet. I guarantee Obama, um, Melania didn't launch any Be Best campaign. She had a staff of idiots who um, maybe were inspired by, by a prior administrator's pamphlet. There's no reason to attack her. To getting busted by her husband for watching fake news on CNN. Everyone watches CNN. I watch CNN to laugh at it. She watched CNN on an airplane. CNN is what they play in everywhere. If it wasn't for CNN being played in um, airports, you would have never heard of CNN. It would it would it would have died. It would it would have busted. Um, as she left Washington for Texas to visit a shelter for immigrant immigrant children. Okay, well, when Obama was locking up children from 2008 to 2016, did uh, Obama's wife, what's her name, Michelle? um, Did Michelle Obama visit children? Did you you make a, a spoof on Michelle Obama's? Because you know that Obama, Barack Obama, locked up those children. You know that, right? I mean, you... You were aware from 2008 to 2016 that Obama was deporting Mexicans back to Mexico. Um, this is so fucking stupid. You do yourself harm. I almost I read these things and I think I wonder if it's like a deep, deep fake. These people. Um, they they're secretly Republicans. They're secretly like on the religious right or something, just, I, it's the only way I can explain people who are so incredibly tone deaf to politics and how people think. People see this stuff and they think, wow, you guys are fake news. Because in our minds, the normies' minds, the moderates, the fence sitters, the people who are extremely moderate, we look at Mad Magazine and comics and CNN and MSNBC. They're all selling the same um, narrative, I guess. They're selling the same racism against European people and sexism against men. It's just men are dumb and European people are all horrible. And and so we look at it and basically after a while we say, well, whatever your proponents of, is the wrong take. You guys hate Trump, and most of us, myself included, were very, very far from being fans of Trump. Uh, But we look at CNN, and I saw that CNN was terrified of Trump. They hated Trump. Anything CNN hates is probably, I don't want to say good, I won't go 180 degrees, but I'll say that CNN is probably not representing the person accurately. And so people like me, people, the moderates, or even left to center, we looked at what they're saying about Trump and all these other right of center politicians. We saw it was all bullshit. CNN's lies. MSNBC and CNN is nothing but fake news. Mad Magazine is just a continuation. It's just an arm of that, that fake news. Roseanne shifts blame for racist rant. Better line through chemistry. Roseanne Barr writes a racist tweet, loses her show, and blames it on Ambien. Come on, who blames outrageous behavior on a sleeping pill? Um, well, if you've ever taken Ambien, you know that that actually does happen. Uh, and, okay, you made a claim that it, she made a racist rant, a racist tweet, racist, racist, racist. So what did she actually say? Where in this do you quote her tweet? Oh, what's that? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I don't see the quoted tweet. That's really strange. I made one lousy racist tweet. Suddenly my show is canceled. My co-stars hate me. My career is over. Talk, top it off. I found out there's a new drug I could have blamed it on. Um, Ambien does make you str- say strange things. My point is, they're talking about a racist tweet, but they don't show the racist tweet. Is it possible that the tweet wasn't actually racist? Yes, yes it is. Roseanne Barr was talking about uh, some woman 
who is I don't know what she is, what her ethnicity is, but she's has a very minor amount of African American in her. I think she's got some Arab in her. And Roseanne looked at her and she thought she was talking to her kid about it. She thought, well, she thought she was Jewish like we are. Because uh, she's very, the woman was very, very light skinned. And she said something about Planet of the Apes, comparing her to Planet of the Apes. And all people compare people to looking like monkeys and apes. George Bush was famously, famously joked about for looking like a, a monkey or something. Because if you look at George Bush, I'm talking about the 2000 president to 2008, and Obama, they both look like monkeys a little bit. They both have kind of big ears and kind of a, an Alfred E. Newman, what me worry um, kind of look on their face. Both George Bush and Obama look like monkeys. It's not racist to say Obama looks like a monkey. George Bush looks like a monkey. Uh, hundreds of years ago, uh, pre-1865, um, what's his name? Lincoln was compared to an ape. They called Lincoln an ape. They compared his his physical, his physicality, his mannerisms, his motion to that of an ape. He was very, he was very, very tall. They called him an ape. Is it racist? No, no, none of this. Most things aren't actually racist. They're just people being dicks. It calling someone a monkey. I guarantee you, more European people have been referred to as monkeys. The Irish have been referred to as animals, as monkeys. Was that racist? Maybe if it's, I don't know. It could be. It could be. But my point is, calling Obama uh, or Bush or Lincoln um, monkeys or apes, it's not racist. People are just making fun of politicians. And Roseanne was talking to some politician who, I guess she, she looked like a monkey or she looked like an ape, or at least Roseanne thought she did. I don't, I don't remember who it was. And um, the thing is, if she was clearly African American, nobody would have said it. Because you know that's a hot button issue. You're not going to say that. Roseanne is not stupid. The only reason she thought it was safe to call her a monkey or whatever is simply because she didn't think she was African American. She thought she was Jewish. Anyway, um, Tide Pod, yeah, those people are retarded. Uh, oh, hey, more. Uh, Trump to Putin at Helsinki meeting. When Donald Trump and Vladimir met behind closed doors, it seemed a little fishy. Why would two politicians' meetings seem fishy? Many, many meetings are not um, public. Remember when Obama was meeting with um, one of Putin's aides and he didn't know he was on a hot mic? You guys remember that? When Obama was talking about, I think it was in 2000, and f oh, no, not 2004, 2012 ish, when he was uh, up for re election, he said he would have more freedom after the election. Did the media find that fishy? This is just nonsense on top of nonsense. It's, it's shit like this that got Trump elected. And it's stuff like this that I guarantee you will get him elected in 2020. I, I almost suspect you guys are working for the Republican Party. Uh, commemorate the landmark dog and pony show between America's leader... And his lapdog. Trump is nobody's lapdog. Even to those of us who do not like Trump, we're not so stupid as... Okay, say you don't like Trump or Hillary. They're both reprehensible people. They're not good people. But Hillary is actually evil, while Trump is just a jerk. But the thing is, in the beginning, I did not like Trump or Hillary, because Hillary has a track record, and Trump is just an asshole. But I would never... In a million years, look at Trump and Hillary and say that they're uh, they're dumb or that, that Trump is a lapdog. Hillary and Trump, they're both highly intelligent. Yes, Trump is very intelligent, as is Hillary. Neither Trump or Hillary is anyone's lapdog. They're both out for themselves, possibly out for the, what they believe is for the good of the country. But if you want to talk about people being lapdogs and people being beholden to special interests. Uh, didn't Hillary have some kind of charity trust fund that soon as she lost the uh, charity, um, charity fund, not trust fund, uh, that soon as she lost the election, <laughs> that funding just dried up. That should tell you something. And to their credit, some, some liberals did talk about that, that 
when you donate to a campaign like Hillary Clinton and then the donations stop when you realize that she's never going to be anything ever again, um, obviously you're buying influence. You're not donating to some Haitian fund. You're simply buying influence and that her fundraising is going to be very, very slushy. You know, that I'm saying um, the concept of commingling and tracing funds. Um, what happened to all that Haiti money, Hillary and, and uh, um, Bill Clinton? What happened to that money? It seemed to have disappeared. A collage of skillfully rendered images depicts the easy top-bottom rapport is that, uh, are you, why does, why do people on the left portray homosexuality as an insult? Um, I think that's the joke they're going for. Top, bottoms, it's a sexual thing. Rapport between two super narcissists. narcissists. Yes, I'm sure that Trump and um, Vladimir are incredibly full of themselves. They should be. They're both wildly successful guys. Um, and I'm neither one of them is... Uh, someone I would want to sit down and have dinner with. Probably because Vladimir has a habit <laughs> of actually murdering his political opponents. They, they put a little, uh, they take an umbrella and they put like kind of a hollow point syringe in it and they load it with poison. <laughs> and uh, you simply have somebody walk up next to your target with an umbrella and you just poke them. And next thing you know, they're, they're dead. It could be like tetrodotoxin or something incredibly, incredibly toxic. Something that looks like a heart attack or stroke or something. Um, flush his intelligence community right down the Russian word for toilet. An intricate border of inlaid hammer and sickle symbols. Why would, um, why would Vladimir, why would Russia support Trump over Hillary? Didn't Hillary sell him uranium? I mean, if anything, the, the modern DM, DNC is much, much closer to, uh, uh, Vla um, Russia than Trump would ever be. Trump's a hardcore capitalist. Okay, this uh, Elon Musk. I didn't really follow this story, but it was something about uh, some kids got trapped in a Thai cave. Um, nobody could help them, and Elon Musk sent them a uh, sent them a submarine. It didn't work. Okay, so he tried to help. It didn't work. Why is Mad Magazine going after Elon Musk? Probably because I don't think he's right of center, but he's definitely not far left of center. Um, and so that makes him very, very dangerous. Okay, this one is bizarre. And this one, uh, stuff like this is why you, you lose your magazine and, and why you're losing elections. Education, or lack thereof, Yes, yes. The <laughs> the left wing seems to believe that they own education because they own the colleges and universities. If you go to college and you do you get a degree in sociology or communications or underwater lesbian feminist theory and deconstructing the patriarchy, you haven't learned anything. If you get a STEM degree, you've learned something. You know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, computers. Yes, you've learned something. A STEM degree, a STEM BS is valuable. Uh, if you're getting a degree in black studies or feminism, uh, you need to immediately change your major to STEM. You're, you're not learning anything with a feminist or black studies. Those are the or sociology or communications or or psychology. Any of those any of those very, 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 very soft degrees. Those are you're just wasting money. And if you go in debt to get those, a liberal arts degree, you're out of your freaking mind. It, if you tell me you're going in debt to get a computer science degree, all right, fair enough. You want to get a, a chemical engineering degree and you're going into debt to do it? Fair enough. That's worth it's probably worth it. Anyway. The left seems to think they own education. Um, I went to college and I got my STEM BS and later degrees after that. I learned something, but I never in a million years would think it made me smarter than people who didn't go to college, who people just entered the workforce. You can learn probably 90% of the topics um, on the Internet now. If you want to study physics, you can probably learn the majority, at least the bachelor's level, online. 
I mean, it's not practical because you couldn't use a degree, but I'm saying that you're not any better for getting a degree than someone who didn't get a degree. Anyway, education or lack thereof remains a major issue in the United States. Exhibit A, elementary schools seem to depend, spend too much on the three R's and not nearly enough time on don't light your clothes on fire. What the fuck? Nike announced a partnership with peaceful protester, former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. White nationalists took to the... Are you trying to say that the only people who had a problem with uh, Kaepernick uh, taking a knee are white nationalists? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're insane. This is just... This is insane. This is just the ravings of a rabid dog. If a rabid dog could form words. Everyone took a look at that guy taking a knee and thought, whoa, these spoiled NFL players are really... um, really out of their minds. This is just a game. We're just here to watch football. And I wouldn't go that far. I was kind of more on the uh, guys taking a knee than most people who are, I guess, moderates or, or on the right. I, I totally support their right to take a knee. You can protest any way you wish. But the NFL also has the right to fire you. <laughs> so I, I do not mind their protest. But what I do mind is that um, while, the, while they were protesting, taking a knee, talking about police brutality is that they were so ineffective, ineffective about uh, addressing the issue of police brutality. And while I'm either a moderate or somewhat red of center, I'm also somewhat of a libertarian, which means um, I will gladly speak out against police brutality, um, which isn't a very popular opinion to have if you're on the right, because then people on the right and the left just... The people who are libertarians just don't. Everyone seems to hate us. Um, so I gladly speak out against police brutality. But what did taking a knee do? If you want to stop police brutality, the only way to do it is to somehow uh, get the district attorneys to hold the police accountable. But the district attorneys and the police have a weird incestual relationship where nobody is is hold, who will guard the guards, remember that Latin phrase? Nobody is holding the police accountable. That needs to change. The only way to get that to change is to talk to our Congress, our, our, our representatives in Washington. What did the NFL protesters do to pass laws to create an oversight committee that will hold police accountable? To change the laws on, um, I don't know, uh, uh, assumptions of... Um, guilt or innocence or um, burden of, um, you know, preponderance of the evidence on police. How do we, how do we get the district attorneys to charge police officers when they shoot people in the back? Well, what the NFL and the uh, Black Lives Matter people did was very, very, very short-sighted. They held up signs which said Black Lives Matter. If they held up signs which said All Lives Matter, or as soon as, as soon as they got any pushback, um, people saying people said, "Oh, all lives matter." You know, actually, more more uh, people of European descent are murdered by police than people of African descent. If those Black Lives Matter protesters said, "You know what? You're right. Why don't we?" I tell you what, we'll change our signs to "All Lives Matter," but you put your money where your mouth is and come come protest with us. That would have been the most powerful thing they could have done, and they totally flubbed the ball. They maintained that Black Lives Matter. Period. And if you look at the people behind the Black Lives Matter and the NFL stuff, it's the same usual suspects, just absolute scumbags. Anyway, um, they've already bought their their Nike merchandise. Nike stock reached an all-time high. I wonder how Nike stock is doing today. Um, but not to worry, racists. They're racist because they see these millionaires protesting at a sporting event and the, the protest was completely ineffective. How are they white nationalists and racists? This is the story of racist men who protest, not to protest, but I'm a blonde kid. Oh God, aren't white people so dumb? God, aren't European people just so dumb? How, it's, you know, it's a wonder that Europeans were so amazingly successful it's just, I mean, if Europeans are these borderline retarded idiots, how have they managed to been so, be so successful and build such amazing countries? It's really a mystery. Just, 
I don't know who's pulling the strings behind Mad Magazine, but anyway, um, Paul Manafort. Uh, this is kind of deep, deep, kind of deep baseball for a, a comic magazine. Sleazeball Russian lobbyist, former Trump, Trump campaign manager. Who fucking cares? Who would have gotten away with stealing millions and cheating the IRS? But he made one fatal mistake. He helped get Trump elected, landed on the radar. You, this doesn't. This is way too deep for a a comic book magazine or a comic parody magazine, whatever the hell Mad Magazine is, this doesn't make any sense. This is, uh, regardless, Mueller's power button is controlling Manafort now. Oh, because Mueller, remember um, if you're on Twitter a year ago or whatever, it was, uh, oh, hey, Mueller's coming. They had all these memes, and they say the left can't meme. Well, they really can't, because they had all these memes about Mueller is coming, Mueller, Mueller is coming, and then, he, well, he came and he went. Um, okay, men are bad, men are bad, men are bad, because a company sold a potato chip where the chips are smaller, and I guess they make a little bit less noise, because, I mean, I'm not, you're not telling us anything we don't know, know that women don't want to look like disgusting, noisy pigs when they eat. This is a company just trying to sell a product, because women don't want to make a lot of noise when they're eating chips. Times have changed. Now there's an empowering chip for chicks. Women only Lady Doritos, and they have a woman in a burqa. Oh, oh, wait, no, wait. That You're not trying to insult Islam, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. You wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare insult Islam. Um, actually, that's kind of a sexy pose. Uh, the Dorito, which is, I think, a Latin for um, fin-shaped or tooth-shaped. If Nevada, is that the word? Um, but it's it's kind of in her crotch and it's like her pubic bone or her uh, pubic hair the kind of the v-shaped bush um i wonder if they did that on purpose that is an incredibly sexy pose um actually it's kind of interesting if you think back to the word cuneiforms which are um writings on clay tablets and they fired up the clay and those writings you know lasted ten thousand years um the word cuna uh, relates to the modern word. Um, I can't say. It. I'll say it's C U N T. Um, it's funny the uh, entomology of words um, like uh, Nevada or Doritos or cuneiform or cunt. Sorry. Um, oh, anyway, so they're not making fun of Islam. Of course, they're not. They're they're trying to make fun of Christianity, which is like the kindest religion in the world. The Christians are the you know, everyone can be have have jerks in them, but Christianity and Christians are not they're not the bad guys in this world. And um they don't have a history of treating women badly. Islam, however, on the other hand, does have a history of treating women very, very badly. <laughs> they Islam forces women to wear burqas. And if they leave the burqas, they will be stoned to death or publicly whipped. This anti-Christian attitude is insane to anyone. Okay, listen. Listen. The the Quran and the secrets of Islam, the surahs, the hadith, this is not off limits to us. We can read the highlights or we can read the full text of the Quran online. There are tons of people discussing the Quran. Islam and the secrets of Islam are not secret. There is no secret to any religion whatsoever. There are secrets anymore in the past 20 years, just because of social media and the internet, the, the ability for us to look up information. Uh, I read a lot of the Quran. I read a lot of the new Testament and the old Testament and, um, what the, some of the Jewish books and the Hindu books. Um, and they're all very, very interesting. I will say the new Testament was probably the most interesting because it seemed like if you're going to build a society following the new Testament, or at least using the new Testament for a guidebook is a pretty reasonable thing to do. Um, and then I read the Quran. Um, it's bad. It's very, very bad. Oh, but Bianca, what about this part right here? Well, see, um, there's a simple word called abrogation that says the later parts of the Quran. It's not, uh, you know, the old real estate rule, first in time, first in right. Abrogation in the Quran means that the later passages uh, are controlling. They're controlling law. Um, later passages control earlier passages. And when two passages are in conflict, 
abrogation says that you take the later passage as the controlling law for that jurisdiction, essentially. Read the Quran for yourself. It's very, very bad. It's not Christians who are doing this to women. It's Islam. Uh, Toys R Us comes back from the dead, whatever. Um, Brett Kavanaugh. Okay. The, the Fifth Amendment due process, uh, even if you don't live in America, the concept of due process, um, the concept of having your day in court, um, presenting evidence, cross-examining evidence, presenting witnesses, cross-examining witnesses, having a fair trial, a jury of your peers, um, uh, adequate legal representation. That con- those concepts of, of due process in the Fifth and Sixth Amendment, those, most of Western, the Western world believes that due process helps to build a better society. Um, to make fun of that? Innocent until proven ridiculous. You people are out of your minds. If you're trying to say you want a, you want a world where witch trials and... Um, uh, uh, God, even from... Okay, going back to witch trials and then... Um, Going back to, say, the 80s, where there was um, this massive rise of alleged Satanism and people being abused. And it, it all boils down to the testimony of children and no due process. Without due process, you get witches being burned at the stake. And the idea that you, Mad Magazine, would be against due process is disgusting. I mean, this is... It's like the adults have left... This is like Lord of the Flies, where the adults have left the building and the children are in charge and the children are really dumb. Printed on high-quality cardstock that will hold up to FBI scrutiny and last for decades. White privilege press. Odd. I don't hear about Jewish privilege or African-American privilege. I hear about... Very, very strange... It's a very, very strange... Who wrote this? Uh, does it say... Um, it doesn't say who wrote it. Sometimes you can tell um, what kind of whack job wrote it. Anyway, um, that's... Um, they're crapping on due process, of course. Trump's a space force. No one is needed to explore space. What kind of take is this? You're so... If Obama was putting people in on the moon or wherever the hell, I don't know what Trump's space force is all about. But if you look at this and you say, well, if Obama was doing it or Hillary was doing it or Sanders was doing it, would you be behind it? And of course, of course they would. Of course people are, the people on the left, if, if you're, if you're, if the left wing, the Democrats are the educated party, then they are the party who believes in science and they're all for, you know, physics and NASA and all this. Of course they're for space exploration, even if it involves military but all of a sudden it's Trump. You say, oh, no, we're against it. There's a, there's this, oh, God, I, guess, I believe it's campus reform. These kids go around college campuses and they ask, um, they ask college kids questions. And um, the assumption the college kids are assuming that it's uh, uh, like it's a Hillary quote or an Obama quote. And um, they love it. And then they find out it's a Trump quote and they hate it. And the reverse is true, too. Um, they, people, you'll, they'll take something that Hillary said or Obama said, and they'll say, Trump said it. What do you feel about it? And it's like, oh, well, obviously he's a Nazi. Obviously it's Charlie Chaplin, that little character with a handle brush must, mustache. And they say, oh, well, actually Obama said it a couple of years ago. And it's just like a record, the needle on the record. Um, they're going after Sanders because she's the um, the, the president's mouthpiece. Yeah, listen, anyone, any politician, the politician's mouthpiece is going to, um, of course, you're going to get a certain uh, certain uh, story from the politician's mouthpiece. But this is all well and good. I don't mind some people going after Trump. Trump definitely deserves to be lampooned. As long as you say, well, yeah, we went after Obama just as hard. But you didn't. I can go through these old magazines and I can pull up the um, 2008 to 2016 and you didn't go after Obama, and Obama had a habit of drone striking little kids. They, the joke is Obama loved to uh, murder brown kids in foreign nations. 
Okay, ran racism and sexism. I don't care about racism or sexism or bigotry. I care about violent crime. <laughs> David Duke University. <laughs> David Duke is is like a hundred years old. Uh, he is totally inconsequential. He has no power and no impact. Um, he is, I guess, some kind of guy who uh, he left the KKK uh, like thirty or forty years ago because he thought that I think the group he was in was getting a little too far out there, a little too whacked out. So, like, 30 or 40 years ago, Duke left them. He stopped. He 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 gave up on the KKK. He's not some racist devil. <laughs> How many people has David Duke killed in his lifetime? How many people has the KKK killed in the past 100 years? A handful? Uh, how many people have uh, gangs in California killed? Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> gangs in California and wherever the gangs are, any city has gangs. Um, those are those people are actually killing people. David Duke might have been 40 years ago a racist idiot. I sincerely doubt he's a racist anymore. Um, he's just an old man. <laughs> and here's another thing about the um, people on the left. This is why you never apologize to people on the left, because they'll never forgive you. If Duke left the um, uh, KKK, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. So isn't that long enough for him to turn around? And according to the left, no, you can never, you're never, you can never redeem yourself. So there's no point in apologizing to the KK, to the um, the left. The left is the KKK nowadays. Um, there's no point in apologizing to them because they'll never forgive you. They're calling some guy who, uh, the pizza guy, I I don't remember his story. I miss, I think he said something like he was dropping N-bombs or something. Um, I don't know. It depends how you say it, I guess. Um, does uh, dropping N-bombs make you a racist? No, it just makes you kind of an insensitive jerk. <laughs> doesn't make doesn't make you a racist. If um, I forget the guy's name, but if if he says, um, "Hey, do you do you believe that uh, you know one group of people is superior because of inherent racial characteristics over another group of uh, another race?" If you believe that one group is superior, then yes, you're a racist. If you're just a jerk who's dropping n bombs because you're very very insensitive, you're not necessarily a racist. You're just kind of an asshole. Um, and that's a very far cry. If someone dropping end bombs is a very, very far cry from being uh, wearing a white hood, which is also funny because the only people who are concealing their identity now are Antifa, which is um, actually reminds me of um, the brown shirts in the '30s uh, were um, I also call them Charlie Chaplin's uh, muscle. Um, they behaved in exactly the same way that Antifa did, does today. They went to meetings, and the, his uh, his brown shirts would break up meetings. They would break up free speech meetings, as uh, as Antifa does today. Anyway, uh, this is what got me started on this. As I came across this uh, um, little subplot in uh, Mad Magazine. Okay. Wow, I am sticky, translucent, rich in bulbous convexities, and touching myself make webs of mucus tinsel. In other words, gorgeous, and what better way to express my superiority than expressing ignorant opinions on social media? Hmm, comics gate. No idea what it is, but clearly superheroes should only conform to fusty gender norms and white, white, whiteness. Clearly girls are fake fans, whatever girls are. Oh, because incels, am I right? Amazing how I am mere minutes old, but hold so many opinions. I saw that, and I just thought, oh, what? what's going on? This, you don't appear to know what Comics Gate is, but you feel very, very comfortable in uh, expressing an opinion on it. And then if you look at the editor, it's uh, DiDio, Dan DiDio, which uh, explains things um, quite well. Um, anyway, I... Uh, I didn't realize I was going to go on uh, on for 50 minutes, and I also realized that no one is going to watch all 50 minutes of this. Um, God, Dan DiDio, what a douchebag, what a colossal, maybe his name is in the, uh, is his name in the, I should have, I should have got a copy of his name. Anyway, um, Bill Morrison, I can't read this damn thing, it's so small. Uh, I know, I know, I'm sure Dan DiDio is in here somewhere. 
Uh, I don't see his name, but I promise you it's in there. Um, uh, so they're they're gone under because they're a bunch of ideologues uh, who can't stop grinding an axe. Anyway, uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and leave a like and a comment. Thanks for listening.